G'day, how you going? Hey, Annapolis here, you're a guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. I wanna teach you beginners and advanced beginners what you can paint in acrylic. The size of the canvas is there, and I'm also gonna get some colors running up the screen that I'm gonna use in this tutorial today. Now this tutorial, it's, um, I wanna teach you how to get those reflections looking quite real in such an easy, simple, minimalistic way, okay? So get on over here and let's get right into it. So I've got me canvas in a portrait layout and I just wanna get, let's say, this part of the canvas down would be our water and a, a, say, I don't know, a, a jagged, crookedy line, somewhere around there, just so you get an idea what's in my mind, would be the rocks. And then we'll have some trees and a little bit of sky poking through. Now I just have some craft paint out of the bottle here. It's just soft body titanium white. There's no retarder in this or nothing because it's only a small sky. And I want to get this just where I know my sky is going to be. So I'll just paint that in there, getting it into the two for me canvas there. So we'll probably, so there's our top area. Let's say down to about halfway of that. You can put your, this paint here. Let's call it a primer. I'm not priming it up because my canvas is already pre-primed. I just want this to help me get my sky colors to not look so dry and chalky and wanting. Now I've got some colors down here that I'm going to use is my magenta. I've got a cobalt blue. I've got a cerulean blue. I've got yellow ochre and I've got a cadmium yellow light. So let me get my sky color, my go-to sky color. My favorite is cerulean blue. Now I've wiped that same brush and I'm just gonna pick up this cerulean on both sides of that flat brush. And like my paint's finished about here. So I'll start at the top. It's very dryish kind of. It's gonna be a pale sky. I don't want it a dark blue sky. And I wanna push that onto that white paint, scrubbing it into there. I'm scrubbing it in because it's a small painting surface. It's only a small canvas. If this was a large canvas, I would have retarded that up so as I'll have more drying time. Now I'm bringing that down to the edge of that white craft paint that I put on there. There we go, it's on there. Now I can stroke it left and right and just get me sky values in there. I don't need any clouds in this. Now that sky can be dry. You can go and have a cup of tea, go and sit down and have a vanilla slice, enjoy the sunshine and come back to it when you're ready. All right, down here I've got my magenta and my cobalt blue. So I wanna start mixing the red into the cobalt blue, just so as I can get a kind of a dark purple going there. Just to map in the dark color for me trees. If you've got detailed brushes to get beautiful trees, use them, but I'm just going to use my filbert brush. Now I've just dampened it and I just want to get the top of the trees done first, then block the rest in. So I want my trees kind of coming off the painting. See how I come off the painting? Because I just want a bit of sky there, but with some sky windows. And I want to bring the trees down within. I want to start building this up for it to become solid. So let's say about, turn my brush around back from here and bring it in from about there. Okay, I, I, I like a light, I would like a nice window, sky window there. And then this is just going to be solid. So from the solid part of the paint, it's a beautiful gradient of the two. It's not a solid line there. It's just looking a bit realistic. That's what you want. And the same on this side. And then I'm going to bring it down to this area here. Just finishing it off here. I picked up my mixing brush, that flat brush, just to block it in a bit faster. That can come a bit beyond my area there. Now we're working in stages, if you haven't noticed. I'll just neaten that up to my liking. Now this can be dried. I'll bring, actually bring that color down to the water line because before I dry it, I don't want a dry bit and then a wet bit and try and join them and you see some kind of hazard stuff happening underneath your blocking in. So I'm just gonna quickly use the rest of that paint up. If I just get enough out of it, I think I will because I'm gonna have rocks there and they're gonna be, you need the dark color first. So we brought it down to the water line and get, like I said, give it a dry. Okay, down here, I've got some cobalt blue and we'll try and get the most realistic looking green. So I've got the 
yellow ochre and green. Look at that green, beautiful. Kind of a realistic color. Now if you add a bit of cadmium yellow light, I'll just do a bit here so you'll see. I need a bit more. You'll get a different vibe of green. There's the green I want to use. It's kind of a realistic green. So over here, get to the very top of that purple you put in there. And then start blocking in your green. This will look kind of realistic green. It won't look real loud. Uh, what do I call it? I normally say cartoon vibe because when we learn to paint, sometimes we do things a bit cartoony, like the sky colour's too blue, the greens are too green, there's not enough depth and dark behind the greens to make them stand out. I'm going to rock this colour backwards and forwards until I'm happy with the amount, and I'll add the appropriate brighter, duller, shinier, whiter, yellowy, green, whatever I feel I'm going to want to put in there. You can do different types of trees, um, some pines, some ferns, but I'm just going to stick to the one type of tree for now. As I'm coming down to the rock level, where the top of the rock's going to be, I want to kind of, I've come that way and I've come this way, but if anything, this is pointing that way, the other side will point inwards as well. I'm, I know my level of my rocks is about here. I want to have depth underneath here. Now make sure this underpainting's dry, so it's not going to mud up. Make sure this green that you're putting on is inky enough where it's going to leave your brush and stay on the canvas, but not too inky where you'll see right through it. Now I'm going to come down over the rocks here where I know my rocks are going to be. Down there like that. Okay, I've done to what I want. That's dry. And I'll grab some more blue now and put into that mix and just the cadmium yellow light. So we're going to start getting a different green now. You'll see it happening. We've gone from the yellow ochre yellow to the cadmium yellow yellow. Same blue. So I just went and added a lot more of that cadmium yellow light. I want to get to the tops there and then just start bringing some of this in Chris coming down that way and coming down this way just so as it doesn't look too uniformed. Now I've done quite a few of these filbert trees. They're easy. You do your own if you're not too keen on these. Do your own style with brushes you use that make your beautiful trees. I just feel for the amount of tutorials I do, this is just an easy, simple, guaranteed go-to brush to get some quality looking trees. And we'll get some of this dancing there. Now we've got that dark gap there. I'm going to leave it. I want it the other side, I feel, to sort of cringe over it. And see the bottom where the rocks are? This is where this comes in. You dance it right over the darks there and it just creates a lot of beautiful, wonderful depth. start lacing this side in. It's quite easy when you know what to do and when you know what to do that is why I always say you can do it. Listen to the guru and you can't go wrong. It's just simple self-explanatory. That's right so knowing what to do you can do it. Okay, I've pulled some of that paint over here. Now I've got some cadmium yellow medium, not light, medium. It's a different value. And I want to get some of this to a yellow green. And I'm going to do it with both sides of my brush. This will be the highlight. I'll put a little bit of water on my brush so it's going to transfer nicely. Some highlighted stuff in here. Getting the top of that highlighted, radiating down so it's creating a ball type of effect if I can get that to happen and some of this can also go just 
at the bottom there straight over that dark to create that depth I'm talking about. And you can see, let me look in my lens now, I want a bit of this just getting hit with light, some of these low bits there, some here, right over that dark. I'll look into the lens again, probably can have a, a bit billowing here. Nothing too crazy, don't go too crazy if you can help it. Something coming back from here so it doesn't look too weird. Oh, that's a bit blobby that, I'll have to put some dark colours back over that to soften it. I went too crazy there, but just press very softly and dribble some of this over where the rocks will lay and kind of join it up. Stop, squint your eyes and look at your work constantly and you'll be surprised how easy it is to create absolute bullshit on your canvas. I get a bit of that dark colour on my brush, hopefully it's, there we go, just to squash that bright bit down and I can dry it and then detail it again with the yellow. I've given that a bit of a dry, hopefully I don't press too heavy again and we'll just put that back. There we go, I feel I've saved it. Now I've got some burn number and I want to get some black in it. I don't like to use just straight black. I'd like to change them up a bit. When you're first starting, you can get away with that. But as you evolve, you want your work to evolve. And this is just going to be a beautiful dark brown, I hope. Well, it pretty well will be. And I know, let's just say my rocks are going to be somewhere here. Where are we? Somewhere here. I don't want to that bit of purple, I don't want to lose that, okay? I can detail this, make it as rocky as I want, stony and rocky as I want, but pretty much coming along. Now what I want to do, I want to get a bit of darkness. So I'm using this brush because it's flat and I feel I can get a bit of... I want this one kind of about there, not too high. Look at the height, you don't want to go too high where it's going to stop there and it'll look odd for the canopy. Straight trunks is the secret. Okay, we've got one there. Another one next to it. Nice and thin stop about there. Maybe something back here, nice and thin because it's further away and maybe something quite big and robust going right back, right back. And you can see how just the straight trunks can create a real vibe about your work. I remember when I was in my early days I'll be going windy and all over the place and it just creates weirdness. Now what I do want to do is grab another brush that's going to create the depth which is just, this started out as a flat but look how munted up it is. I love it though, it does good stuff. It's going to create, there's me rocks there so I want a bit of darkness here. Just vibing up, vibing up, just evaporating as I go higher. Where are we? Somewhere here. Knowing this is so easy. Once you know how to do it, you'll be doing it in all your work and people will go, I like the way you did that. And that is the way you create bullshit within your artwork. Because that's what they'll say. They'll go, bullshit, you didn't paint that. There we go, we've got a bit of detail and you can even use this if you want. Let's say here, get a bit of scraggly, detaily branches just with this. There we go. Okay, now let's sit that into the artwork. It's had a dry. I'm gonna grab this same brush. Now I've grabbed my darkest green, which is, I've got a perylene green, because I do want to, this is gonna be different trees in front of that forest. And I've got some cadmium yellow medium. Now I wanna mix up my darker green to the value I want, and then I'll use some of that yellow to create the highlight of these trees. But they've gotta be a different vibe of green to that. That's why I wanna to get totally different green. Now I'm gonna get some water onto that brush. I'm brush mixing it. 
So I've washed it and wiped it and I'm ready to go. So I'm not that clever with trees, but I do know, let's say from about here, I want to bring something just in front of that. Now look at that, that's very, very blobby. So I'm just going to wipe that on a towel. I went and added too much water with that paint. I dried that and now I'll get some of this. Where are we? Yeah, see, this is better. I'll get this darkness. Just bring it over those trunks. But you're seeing the trunks within it. Let's get this one. Scratchy up into the sky there. Look at that. Nice dark tree. I don't know what sort of tree it is, but it's a, it's a tree. And this dark, you won't see it very well, but once we put the highlights over it, we will. So you need the darks there for it to happen. Come over that dark bit. And like I said, I don't know what sort of tree they are, but they're quite a nice tree. So we'll just call them a nice tree. Grabbing the slightest white on that blacky brown colour we made, the slightest white. You don't want too much white. You just want enough so when it's against the dark trunks, it'll just stand out. And I think that's just about it. So I'll get it inky enough. I want it gingerly. Let's just try one side. I don't want it too thick either. I want it just lightly in there, lightly up there. and just lightly coming down into the shadows there like that. That way you'll be able to see this once it's all highlighted. Gingerly does it. Now that paint we just used for the trees, there it is there. We want to grab the cadmium yellow light and make a nice brighter value of that now. Just here. Now just check with your other light behind these trees if it's clashing and if it is I might just add a little bit of white just to mint it up a bit just to get a totally different value within there but don't put too much white and you just want to do bits as well so see where I've got gaps of the trunk that's your opportunity to bring this to life where are we I'm just hoping this brush is going to work for me. I want to look. I'm not really liking it, but I'm committed now. And I want the underneath left dark. If you get rid of it, put the darks back. Now I feel I'm going to have to put a bit of white into that because it's still a little bit clashity clashity with the background. I've just grabbed a heap of white but not too much. And have a look at your trees. I'm looking in the monitor now, not the canvas. So as I can kind of see, I want, okay, I want something just on the brim here. Creating the underneath bit there if I can help it. That's what I'm trying to do. And I want to get this tree sitting that one there back if I can. That's what I'm trying to do. Get this one side of it pushing the background behind. Now you, you, before I added this, you might feel, well, I don't want to add it. You don't have to. I'm just doing what I do. You do what you do. Okay, I've got the perline again and we're just going to sink them back now with the side edge framing of the tree sitting at back. We've done that, that's there, but you've got to kind of bring your eye, this is, this is looking too inviting to the eye. So what I want to do now is start bringing stuff from a top, from up above and coming down in front of that, right from the corner there, leaving some sky windows in it, just like this, getting all this, sitting that down. I've dried it so as we're not going to get mudding up. You don't dry it, things go a bit weird. Get some of that right in front of those trees there. Now 
I'm, what I'm doing, I'm adding a bit of detail to break up the mushness of that tree that's back in there. I've just got some of the darker value. I've got a smaller detail brush and I'm just detailing more of the leaves back in there because I feel when I stamped it with that munted up flat brush, I feel I turned it into a bit of mush. And those people who like detail, you can always get your green color highlighted the appropriate color and just do lots of little leaves like this on top of your underpainting and it just gives that sense of more realism as well. Now after adding all the dark I'm just grabbing some more of the light one. I want to leave the darks where I want it and flick in some of this so I've dried it where I felt it needed drying and bring some of these highlighting it. Just be sure you've dried it though because if it does mud up on you you'll get frustrated and then you'll throw it in the bin and you won't like it. Now this tree here the same principle there we're grabbing that highlighted colour over here. Where are we? Right on the very tips of it highlighting that the highlighted colour you put on this dark one, you're just highlighting that with lots of little white leaves. Look at them. Just leaves dropping in front of it all, in front of all the darkness. It's just highlighted. So we've got the dark and we highlighted it with a say like a medium value and then you've highlighted that again and do all these little dots on it and it sinks things back, just gives you that sense of um, realistic leaves, foliage, the finer it is the better it is. I'm looking at it, um, looking in the monitor and I'm just trying to like see here I've got a nice, so I might bring some of this right inside that bit there just to make it look wow and depthy okay and then bits flickering out the side of the painting here thinking this back now right in front of there look at that over the rocks i'll probably detail a lot more of this off camera but i'm giving you the gist of what's in my mind, what you do with this stuff, just to make it look a bit. Go above there as well. Don't stick to the edge. Go past it. Some of these float in mid-air. Just had a look at it. I'm just trying to define a bit more of this with some more highlighted yellow, mainly with a lot of white on it. Just pushing it in front of the background trees there. I'll have a look in my monitor and see if that's doing a job. Yes, it is. It's Doing. So we're going to leave the blacks, but just hover and see here it's sort of mishy washed away. You can't see it, it's mishmashed in. Get those leaves over. I'm trying to, what I'm actually doing, some of you probably already know, I'm trying to save this piece because I feel I went too much. But I'm leaving it in the video because you get a gist of what really happens in real life. I'm not going to edit this out and make myself look perfect because I'm nowhere near perfect, but this is how I'm fixing up this issue. Right out here that tree's coming, so I'm making out like there's enough of those little leaves on there and then I can probably get some fluttering down. Going in here as well in the darkness. I don't know, let me have a look in my monitor to see if I did good or bad there. Now look, these, these colours here, I've added more white. Look, easy, simple to do. I'm just going to put a bit more of this on just to give you an idea of taking your time, just how different and great you can make your composition look just with a bit of detail i didn't know what i was going to paint so hence that's what causes the issue i had going on here but i want to get 
coming out from there I want to get some of these really bright as well but I don't want them too close to that because they'll clash so I just want a band of it being hit by light let's say to speak and I look in my monitor get an idea yes I can see what's happening so looking there I could probably get a few more tracing down in the mid-air like that and a bit more back here one dot should be enough for a leaf if it's not dark enough thick enough opaque enough you've gone and added too much water to your work i'm going to grab uh what have i got here i'll grab this black and the brown just to map in the rest of the bottom half of the painting so coming across the bottom here this is like a blacky brown it's looking good that's pretty much me water, what's gonna be me water. Now this can have some darkness over there as well. Create the shape of your rock. So I want here, I'm gonna start mapping in the top sleeve of this rock here, down there. Getting it nice and sharp against that dark bit that we put there. And then just map the rest of this in and we want to get this just pushed into the canvas there and then we'll start creating the water values this has had a dry i'll put some tape just roughly to the area where i want my water and i want to mix up the first value of the rock so they're going to be burn number and black again okay get the burn number and the black to the value that you want We've already got the dark value there. So I'm getting in the mid-tone there now. And I've got some cadmium yellow light. I want to start mixing into that to highlight it and get a different kind of a rock vibe going. If I can get it. I'm just using a small flat brush to mix this on. Now that's quite dark. That's looking all right. Finding the tops, which is there. Uh, where are we? coming along just make stuff up to me this has got that sandy vibe about it adding that cadmium yellow light within the mix and then once we've done this we will add where we feel we need darker and lighter values so i want some of these rocks now just let's say tracing all the way get some big ones in there tracing down i want a darker shadow there so i'm trying to create that roughly to the tape not on the tape just to the tape and what i'm doing here i'm going down and Look, I'll show you over here, where are we? We'll get a nice bit there. I'm going down and across and mumbling it around and just trying to create natural looks with this flat brush. I feel like the oil artists, they use a knife, but always try and use a brush with acrylics. It works better for you. I, I feel, that's just me, you'll have more control. And when we highlight this, I'm creating tops and sides as I do all this. We'll be able to bring it to life. Now you want to keep this colour as well because we need to put some of this within the water. So what I might do... Can we see you pull that tape off, Ian? Yeah, I'll get rid of that because actually... You didn't really need it there, did you? No, I didn't, but I was just showing them where the water line was about to. So I'll come this way with the brush upside down and just kind of come up like this what I want to do is get a bit on my brush and I want to come like this way just like so not too much the water's a distorted reflection from what's up top don't forget and don't worry about this color that I'm putting on now in the water because we can use the darker color to water fight and sink it back I'm just getting some of the values there there Try not to pick up any white colours. Getting it in the water there. 
be easy, you can do this. Just looking in my monitor, I do want to sink that down a bit more because I've put a bit too much of that darker colour when I put these tree trunks in. So to counter for that, I'm just going to bring this up a bit more. Grab just your black with what's in your brush over here. It'll be a bit of that still in there, but it doesn't matter. Get some of that. Now, not too much, just get it off your brush. Now, if anything, I want to start getting the darkness. So I know I'm going to have some water treacling down here. So I'm going to just... start getting darker areas now where I want my dark rocks to be. Just letting the edges be broken, not sharp. Let them be all opened and whispery and hairy type of thing. Hopefully the light glare is not distorting your view of what I'm trying to achieve here. I want some of this nice and dark scattering across there. Once you dry this paint, it's easier to achieve what you want to do without it mudding up. I want the darks mainly where the darks are going. <laughs> Obviously. But not everywhere. I'm having pockets of darks so you'll get a vibe of, oh yeah, I see what sort of rocks he done. I'm just... Where the rocks meet the water, it's important as well to have that dark, a dark vibe scratching up there and in the water as well, there, there. Getting all that happening. That dark bit that I just put in there. I want to get that replicated within the water, the darker vibe of it. Crossing over the lighter colours in the water across them. I created a little thing with rocks I did years ago and I'm going to show you in this if I remember later on. I'll show you what I mean. You'll see what I mean. Now we're grabbing the cadmium yellow light and getting a bit of this colour now and putting into it. So it's sort of like a, I don't know, a honeycomb flavour there. This is just the colour what my rocks are going to be. Keep some of that in case you need to go back to it. And I want to gingerly highlight my rocks. Let it break up. Now what I want to do is try and get bits, well I'm going to have the water coming down there, so little bits of, I'm going to if anything do a hard bit and then kind of scrape it down, a hard bit, they're all different shapes though, and scrape it down, a hard bit across the top and then scrape it down, that's what's going on in my mind pick up some kind of vibe of having rocks here. Now where my water's gonna be, which is here, I want some of this just treacling there, but not too much. and then get some of this value within the water as well. It's just the value we want. Not too much down the bottom because it'll get a bit darker as we go out there. Could probably pull some a bit closer here down. Now grab some of your white, where do we have that colour? And let's get that a lot more highlighted. So the very top has got it on there. Boom, leaving gaps in between it all. The very top has got it on there. Very top. Now 
need to look in my monitor. I don't want it too bright. Come past the black. Now watch here, just little bits tinkering out. Slithering slated rock it is. I hope that's a word, you know what I'm meaning. slithery looking and some of it just slightly dancing in the black there I'm gonna have a look in my monitor if you feel you've done too much injustice with the light put the darkers back or vice versa with the darks put the lighters back now what I'm gonna do is grab the medium color again and just soften some of that down where I feel it's it's a lot of backwards and forwards stuff, but don't worry, it's how you make beautiful bullshit rocks. So long as you don't kill all the darks. Just a little bit of this down towards the, there. Look at your work, I'm looking at it. Uh, I'm coming from where I feel, let me look in the monitor there. Something here is a bit too much. That's fine. I'm just kind of pushing it back a little bit, fine tuning it. Now, I like that thing I said I stumbled across years ago, something I did. I've never seen anyone else teach it when I was watching a lot of YouTubers back in the day. Someone's probably doing it now. I wouldn't have a clue, but I'm gonna show you what I did just to make this look a bit more deep dark and lovely Get some of this behind where the water's going to go grab yourself a script liner some water and pull out some black get it inky enough now this is where you can make some slithers of rock see what's there come from the black too much you want very little on your brush you don't want these to be big lines and you just sort of wiggle What I'm doing, coming from the dark, continue over the light. I'm creating cracks within me, rocks here and there. Uh, let's go over, let's say here. Come from the darkness. And you're just creating the minutest depth defying cracks within your rocks. Is it looking the part? Take advantage of the areas on your canvas that where you feel it might suit having a crack in there. That's what I did. And when I looked at it years ago, I thought, I quite like that. Bits of cracks coming down here. Tell me in the comments below how you found my channel. Do you like what I'm doing? Give me a comment, say hello, tell me where you're from. And you can see just how they kind of added a bit of realistic depth within your work. Like, watch this, even over the black, boom. So long as they're not big, thick, wide ones, practice this procedure. Everything you see me do, if you've never done it before, please practice it so when you do it into a painting, you haven't sacrificed your painting with your practice work. Now I'm gonna do me water 
coming down the rocks and reflecting into the pond there. So I mean, rocks are pretty much the burn umber. So I'm just gonna taint that white. Just taint it with the burn umber. Don't taint it with the black because you could send it gray. Okay, this is, so on the painting it'll look white, but really it's not. We got the white to really highlight it. Then come in here and I wanna kind of bring Let's say it's coming from there, a bit down here, a bit over there, coming down here. Okay, we've got some water there. It's just, I want it to sort of, where are we? Hit there, it's sort of dribbling over that rock there. I'm just scratching this on. Look how easy it is. I'll come down there, I'll, oh, I just hit something hit another rock. See how easy that is? It's very little on my brush, but there's enough to show you. Now I've got to bring that rock up because this water's higher than that rock there, so I'll bug it up there. This is the underpainting for the water. Come across there, run down there a bit. Like that. See how easy that is? Now I'm looking, I could probably see some more, I probably pulled up here and some more dribble down, hit there, like so, enough to dribble down. I'm looking in the monitor. So here I want it to sort of break up. Now it's hit the water, boom. But don't have it hitting the water at the bottom, come out a bit, so it creates depth behind your work. So that's where it's hit the water. And then this one here's hit the water as well, about there. Let's say this thickest bit, is about there as well. So you don't have to do one scoop in that. You, you control how you want your waterfall to look. Now I want a lot of this just billowing into the water here. It's over the dark part of the rock. Can you see how I've bought it? forward from the back of the rock. See this one here could probably come a little bit. They don't have to be all even. Now strengthen some of the heavier bits up with your brush sideways. And then, and let's say here the main bit, you want it all turmoil from behind it from behind it, and then now in front of it coming out. This bit here is a little bit there. That's got a little bit of nonsense there. Not too much turmoil. You don't want all mist coming up because it's not a big high waterfall. Come from here. And I'm gonna try and replicate that. About here. This one's here. there and a bit of here but, and this one can come about there. Now what we got to do, I'm just going to get the bulk off that brush. I want to blur this if I can so I'm blurring it. It's not really blurring it so leave that. Grab that paint again on the corner of this brush Start getting those scallops that make your reflections a bit more realistic. Now I'll grab my watercolour because this here is a little bit too too loud so I'm going left and right just to sit it back down a bit so as I can detail it with the white it's just too much there I had a look and I did go a bit too much put it there use my finger I'm getting some of this dark just coming across the water like so sinking back those reflections 
I've got pure white on the brush and I'm just looking for the bits where I want it stronger now. Right on the top there, coming down. I want a lot of turmoil here with the white. I want some white pulling there and just a little bit coming down there. I want a bit of turmoil and white here. And then of course, get this turmoil here a bit more white. Gollop, what you put in there. Cross bond it like bricks, don't have them all even. put little bits out here as well if you want just sinking those reflections down give yourself some water just hitting there as well and tapering out Just where it's hitting the back face of the, the rocks there. I'm just going to sign this and I'll whack a frame on it, see how she looks. And I want to take this opportunity to thank my patrons and YouTube members that support me every month for the price of a cup of coffee. Thank you very much, it's much appreciated. And if you like what I'm doing and want to support me, hit the join tab below or the Patreon link in the description box below. There's a link for my Patreon platform and you can support my content by becoming a member of those two. Okay, I'll whack a frame on that and see how she looks. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a creek waterfall with some trees and a bit of a sky going in there as well, peeking through, and I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a comment below and tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Check out this other video of mine and also feel free to subscribe. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.